In this video, we will be looking at how to write the formulas of ionic compounds using some simple rules and the periodic table. First, we will take a look at the ionic compounds and their properties. Generally speaking, ionic compounds are formed between positive ions and negative ions. Metals usually form positive ions and nonmetals form negative ions. And then there are polyatomic ions, which you should know the formulas and charges. Not to mention the multivalent ions or transition metals that usually show more than one valency or oxidation state. We'll look at them in a little bit more detail. If you look at the periodic table, you will find that there are 18 groups. The valency of group 1 elements is positive 1, since they have one electron in the valence shell. And valencies of group 2 elements are positive 2, because there are, they have two electrons in the valence shell. If you go to group 15, the nonmetals, they need three electrons to become stable. Hence, the oxidation number or valency becomes minus 3. For group 16, the oxidation number or valency is going to be minus 2 because it needs to gain two electrons to become completely stable. And for group 17, it would need one electron, therefore the oxidation number or valency would be minus 1. So this is pretty simple and straightforward. So if you can remember this, or look at the periodic table and come up with the oxidation numbers or valencies of group 1 and 2, group 15, 16, and 17, most of your problems are solved in terms of valencies. So you don't need to memorize them. All you need is to recognize how you can assign oxidation numbers of valencies to these elements. Group 1 and group 2 elements cannot have variable valencies, and therefore all the time all elements will have the same valencies as indicated in this case. If you go to elements between groups 3 and 12, they are transition metals, they tend to have more than one valencies. You will learn how to determine the oxidation number of valencies of these in higher classes, but in lower classes, understanding which elements will have more than one valency is helpful. Most of the time, the name of the compound indicates the oxidation state or valency of these elements. To look in detail, group 1 elements in general have a valency of plus 1, group 2 metals have a valency of plus 2, group 13 elements have a valency of plus 3. Transition metals between groups 2 and 13 have a variable valency, therefore they can have more than one valencies. Nonmetals tend to form anions by gaining electrons. Group 17 elements would have an oxidation state of minus 1 or valency of minus 1. Group 16, as we already stated, minus 2. Group 15 has a valency of minus 3. These are the common valencies that we will be using. Here are some examples of multivalent ions, and these multivalent ions are positive ions, therefore they are also called cations. Iron has two positive and three positive valencies. Copper forms plus one and plus two valencies. Lead forms two plus and four plus. Tin forms two plus and four plus. Mercury forms one plus and two plus. Polyatomic ions, you got to learn the names and the formulas and the charges. Here, NH4 positive is ammonium ion. It has got an oxidation number or valency of plus 1 for a group of atoms. And this is the only polyatomic ion that you will be learning which has a plus 1 oxidation state. All the other polyatomic ions have negative charges. Phosphate, PO4, 3 negative. Sulfate, SO4, 2 negative. Carbonate, CO3, 2 negative. Chlorate, CO, ClO3 minus or negative 1. C2H3O2 negative 1, which is acetate. Sometimes it's also written as CH3COO negative. Sulfite, SO3 2 negative. Nitrite, NO2 negative 1. Phosphite, PO3 3 negative. And bicarbonate or hydrogen carbonate, HCO3 minus. Now we will see how we can write the formulas of some ionic compounds.
basic assumption is that all ionic compounds, when their formula is written, the net charge of the positive and negative ions that actually constitute the ionic compound will have a charge of zero. So the whole idea of writing the formula of an ionic compound is when you combine the positive ions and negative ions, their charge should become zero. That is the principle for writing the formulas of ionic compounds. And we will express this number in the simplest possible ratio. Here is an example for you, sodium chloride. Now the two elements from which they are formed are sodium and chlorine. Sodium belongs to group 1, therefore its valency is plus 1. Chlorine belongs to group 17 and its valency is minus 1. Now if you want to have a net charge of 0 by combining the two, since we have one positive and one negative, all we have to do is combine them together to get the formula of sodium chloride. So in this case, the formula of sodium chloride will be NaCl. Let's look at another example. Here we have calcium chloride. Two elements are calcium and chlorine. Calcium belongs to group 2, therefore its valency is plus 2. Chlorine belongs to group 17 and its valency is minus 1. So now if you try to combine the two, you'll find that a 1 to 1 ratio doesn't work here. Since you have two positive and one negative, you need to combine it such that the net charge becomes zero. And while writing the formulas of ionic compounds, you can take as many positive charges or as many negative charges as you need so that when they combine, they have a net charge of zero. Since we have two positives, we need two negatives. For that reason, we will take two chloride ions. So we have two positive charges and two negative charges. So the total charge will be zero if you combine the two together. And when you combine them, this is how you write the formula. Since we have one calcium, we write it as Ca, and we have two chloride ions, we have Cl2, and the formula looks like this, CaCl2. Let's look at another example. We have sodium sulfide. The two elements that are present in this compound are sodium and sulfur. Sodium belongs to group 1, therefore its valency is plus 1. Sulfur belongs to group 16, therefore its common valency is minus 2. So you have one positive charge and two negative charges. In order to make the charges equal, you will need two positive charges, which means you need two sodium ions. So, if you take two sodium ions, you have two positive charges. If you take one sulfide ion, you have two negative charges. If you combine the two together, you will get sodium sulfide, which is written like this, Na2S. The net charge of sodium and sulfide together is zero in this case. Let's look at another example. Here we have a combination of the metal calcium reacting with phosphate. Calcium is a metal. Phosphate is a polyatomic ion. So, calcium belongs to group 2, therefore its valency is plus 2. Phosphate is a polyatomic ion, formula is PO4, and the charge is negative 3. So, now you have two positive charges and three negative charges. One is an even number and the other is an odd number. So, the best thing to do is multiply the two together. 2 times 3 makes it 6. So, if you can make 6 positive charges and 6 negative charges, and combine them, you will get the formula of calcium phosphate. So if you need six positive charges, how many calciums do you need? You will need three calciums. And how many phosphate ions are required for six negative? You will require two. So to generate six positive ions, three calcium ions are taken. And to generate six negative charges, we're going to take two phosphate ions. So now the number of positive charges is equal to number of negative charges. All you have to do is write it as a single formula. Since there are three calciums, you will write it as Ca3. And since you have two phosphate ions, phosphate ion is a polyatomic ion, you would actually write it in brackets and then you would put a 2. And this is how the formula looks, Ca3, PO4 in brackets 2. 
that would give you the formula of calcium phosphate. Let's look at another example. Here in this case, we're going to look at tin 4 sulfate. Now, when you look at the name itself, it gives you an indication that tin has the possibility of having more than one valency. And when that is the case, we say tin is multivalent. And the valency of tin in this compound is represented in brackets using Roman numerals. So 4 means tin has got an oxidation state of 4 plus. So let's look at the two elements. One is a metal, the other is a polyatomic ion. Tin generally has two valencies possible, 2 plus and 4 plus. So in this case, tin has got an oxidation number or valency of plus 4. And the polyatomic ion sulfate has a valency of minus 2. So you have four positives and two negatives. So how many negative charges do you need? Totally four. For that you will require how many sulfate ions? We will need about two sulfate ions. So let's write it. SN4 positive and two sulfate ions make the total negative charge equal to minus four. If you combine the two together, you can write it as SN there is one of them, and sulfate in brackets because it's a polyatomic ion, and two of them. So the final formula of tin 4 sulfate would be SnSO42. Now let's practice naming using these examples. At this point, I would suggest that you pause the video, write the formulas of the reactants that you see here, and then check your answer on the next slide. Here are the solutions to your practice questions. Barium nitrate, the correct answer is BaNO32. Magnesium sulfide, MgS. Aluminum carbonate, Al2CO3 in brackets three times. Iron 3 nitrate, notice that iron is multivalent, therefore we write the valency in brackets. FeNO3 three times. Lead for sulfate again, lead is a multivalent ion, therefore the valency is plus 4 in this case. PbSO4 two times. Calcium phosphide Ca3P2. It's not phosphate, it's phosphide. The ending is IDE, therefore a single element. Sodium hydrogen carbonate or sodium bicarbonate, NaHCO3. That's it for now. If you need more practice, you can go to my website, www winstan.com or v-i-n-s-t-a-n.com. You can download more practice sheets on naming and check your skills on naming of ionic compounds. That's it for now. If you like the video, please don't hesitate to rate, comment and subscribe. Thank you and have a great day.